Hey guys, so get this. In April of this year, this is an iPhone 8 Plus. In April of this year, my Apple Care expired on it. Um, they don't really let you know that it does. And I don't know if you could see it properly, but the screen is cracked. Thankfully, the Touch ID function isn't impacted, um, but I am gonna lose something. I'm going to lose True Tone with the replacement screen that I got, even though it's just as good as the Apple original screen. So at the top of the video, before I show you how I'm repairing it and what with, um, the best method for fixing this would be to remove the glass and using specialty apparatus and glue um, to re-glue it to uh, the original screen. Since Apple programs these screens in the later iOS to not respond to true, true tone. So ever since iOS 14 something, I think I was running a beta. First of all, you get light and dark mode, but you also get uh, night shift and true tone, which kind of change the color, color balance of your display. And this guy, after the display repair is complete, um, you know, it, the, the switch is not really going to tint my screen based on my environment or surroundings. It might even complain, I don't know, it might even complain that this is not a genuine screen. So um, once again, if you guys know anybody who can take the screen I'm about to take off, take the glass off and put a new piece of glass on and mail it back to me, I'd appreciate that you let me in the know in the comments down below because uh, I would definitely do that and then reinstall the genuine screen again with a glue in kit. This is actually my own phone. I didn't buy it for the video. It just happened to break and I would have happily handed it to AppleCare had it not silently expired. Um, I'm going to run a complete iCloud backup so if you're replacing your screen and that's your only phone and then the only other option if it doesn't work out is you going to the Apple store to get one you should definitely do a complete backup of your phone. I know Apple just came out with some bad news about scanning your iCloud for stuff or whatever, but this is a really good option. Disclosure, iFixit did not pay me for this. I know there's a lot of tech channels and other places where they promote iFixit. iFixit does sponsorships. Um, I've been an iFixit customer. I bought this with my own money. I didn't buy it to review. I bought it to fix my friggin' phone. So uh, don't put me on blast. Uh, I just, you know, wanted to buy the iFixit iPhone 8 Plus screen kit. Now, just to let you know, the value of this phone is about $180 at trade-in. And now that um, Apple is trading in these phones for newer models of phones in good condition, you hand them this phone, they shred it. Um, I'm all about reusing things. I don't want them to shred it. So let's check out what's inside the kit. This is a complete repair kit because you could buy a screen only, but for pretty much the same amount of money. And we got two boxes. We got the repair kit and repair part. I'm assuming this is the screen and I'm assuming this is the repair tools. Let's find out what's inside here. All right, so let's get into this guy. I put on some gloves, because I'll be dealing with, ah, uh, I can't open boxes. I'll be dealing with the phone and internals and finger grease and whatnot. So, uh, I opened it wrong. All right, so what do we, what do we got in the repair kit? Okay. I'm guessing these are the bits to uh, unscrew certain parts of the phone. I do have an older, I fix it kit from, I don't know, 2012 or something like this. It definitely does not have these bits in it, like a tri bit. Um, it has a pentalobe bit, but that was for the MacBooks and all this other stuff. Tweezers I have, um, that's like a screwdriver thingy. And this other splooger they call it or spludger i don't even know how to pronounce it the most important thing for me is this suction cup and that's why i want to keep it clean hopefully i can suction off the phone after heating it with a hair dryer because uh all these phone all these phones are glued together cool and now that i have my repair kit tray in disarray um i don't even know how it's supposed to go yeah 
or that, like that, and like that, and then the three bits probably go in here. I fix it since you get to write a complaint letter about this video to me, and I don't care. Nobody owns me, it's my channel, I film what I want. So yeah, this is the repair kit tray. I'm gonna put it away now. Oh yeah. These were definitely designed to be noticed if they're open, which is kind of cool in case my mailman decides to go in and mess with my iPhone 8 Plus screen. You probably have a nicer phone than I do. All right, I'm assuming this is the screen protector. This is a little guitar picky type of tool. You could use a guitar pick, playing card, whatever, but this is a nice rigid tool to pick up the screen carefully. And here's the complete, oh, I can't, I'm not gonna be able to open this right on camera. Here's a complete uh, screen assembly situation and fairly dull scissors. Let's check out Check out the screen. Okay, alrighty. So this, I don't know entirely if this is a, a legit screen that they took off another broken phone, um, or it's like side sourced from the same place that Apple produces it, or the panel has been replaced and redone. The way I asked my original screen to be redone, if anybody, again, hit me in the comments down below if you know how I can just, uh, when I get it into this format, send it to somebody who has a machine to uh, redo the glass on the original so I get the true tone. But yeah, there's a whole screen assembly right here. Okay, so the first step in, uh, in this saga is this tiny, tiny pentalobe screwdriver and these two guys need to come out. Now, I had to honestly pick out each bit and carefully try to fit it and feel that this is gripping. So now I could start. Here's the first pentalobe screw coming out. And I like to stick stuff onto clear tape whenever I'm taking apart small stuff. I don't know if you could see it here, but there's that first screw. Here's the second pentalip screw. I hope the focusing distance is good. Those two came out seamlessly. There's all, all kinds of gack in there. All right, so I'm gonna use this alcohol prep before I heat the phone with the blow dryer in the hopes that I'm gonna take off any residue and my target for the suction cup is gonna be here. So this, this is a genuine medical alcohol prep and I'm wearing gloves. I'm just gonna play it by ear, it just should be hot enough. Um, hopefully I won't do anything. This material is not something you wanna run a blow dryer on, so I'm gonna kinda hand hold it and I'm gonna set it to low, and hopefully it doesn't make my screws and warm fly away. So the phone is hot to the touch here on the top, and we're gonna do this sticky pad right here. And we're gonna try to magically pull off the screen. Uh, this is not magic, so it's magically not coming off. Heated it up again, a lot, a lot, a lot. Enough to probably melt this plastic. And I'm gonna try to pry it out again. Oh, here it goes. It's coming up a little. I need my little pry tool situation here there it goes yeah and we're in all right so now the yeah, fix it manual says to work this pick together with the suction cup action 
which I'm not getting too much action on actually in or around the corners of the screen and that's what's happening here but the screen is kind of cracking so I'm gonna try to be as careful as I can the most toughest part of this is over you can still see there's some glue in there and that's why gloves help and there's some glue in there etc a little piece of glass flew off as I was trying to do this and you got to be careful because there is a but right by the cameras here from this side there is ribbon cables but now we have successfully almost opened the phone like so here we go all right there i'm lucky that a lot of the glue stuff uh, stayed on the display i'm not lucky that the glass cracked a little so i don't know if i'll be able to send this display to get refurbed this guy and this guy this and this guy and this guy are different length do not long screw your iphone these are 1.3 and 1.3 so they're really short screws um this one is 1.4 millimeters and this one is 2.7 millimeters do not put a 2.7 millimeter into this hole during reassembly so we're going to undo these real quick now my trick for these this type of stuff is to put stuff on tape in the same position as is on the phone so that these screws live on tape in exactly the same configuration that way I don't mess things up and I also refer to the screw length I have a roll of uh, sticky tape holding the screen up so I don't have to yeah that one is long and it's it's gonna come with this piece right here together like that well, the guide is suggesting that we take the battery connector off first if we can we have a nice little spludger tool I have no clue how this is supposed to help me take the battery connector off guys this is not really giving me okay so I assume that's the battery connector now there are only on our part there are only two display connectors I'm assuming one is a display connector and the other one is the touch connector so, so those two are off now, in order to make things more fun, Apple decided to not only have a Phillips screwdriver with four different sizes of screws here to, uh, to do this, but they also decided to use tri-point screws on the other part, which is like this. This is the Touch ID piece. Um, and these two screws have to come out. They're also different length. One of them is 1.0 millimeters and one of them is 1.2. I'm assuming the one closer the closer to the phone is 1.2, but I'm gonna still just put them exactly the same way. Wait, these are not. It, it's tri point doesn't work. Or these are not tri point. I can't see. Okay, it's grabbing it. It's hard to reference it. Um, oh, flew away. since the pictures in the fix it guides they keep on rotating so it's hard to reference it and made it with the part or with the orientation of the phone i'm not blocking too much of it oh it has a 
either anti-seize compound or that was the further one on that bracket. And I'm gonna pick this bracket up. It's non non-magnetic. I say to use your beautiful tweezers. So let's do that. Again, we're using this wonderful splooger tool to disconnect the Touch ID ribbon from the phone somehow, magically. This thing is not really helpful. This thing is right in there. All right. I really hope I didn't screw up any connectors. Let's see what this connector looks like. Let's grab it. All right, so that connector looks like that. It's weird, 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 tiny connectors. Okay, so now this screen with the glue can come out and we can take the phone with its battery disconnected and put it to the side for now. All right guys, so what I did is I took a little break and um, what I did is I cleaned up the glue residue inside the case here, all over the case. Um, one thing that happened is you gotta be mindful of what you're cleaning with. As you can see the streak right here, that was when my uh, little alcohol swab touched it a little bit with the uh, um, Taptic engine. I thought it was an oil stain or something, but what it did is it effectively took the paint off, which is not that great. Now, just to compare these two screens, this is the iFixit screen they sent. This is the OEM screen. First of all, um, there's going to be a migration of the touchpad um, touch ID sensor here. And to do that, uh, we'll need to remove four screws, apply heat, pull it out, put it in. But we can see clearly right here, the difference is, is that right here, this connector has a different label on it than this connector. This connector is glued a little bit sideways and it has a display ID here. There's a sticker here on the iFixit side. Um, what they've done really cool is that I don't have to move the camera. That's the front facing FaceTime camera or anything else like that. There's just a ribbon cable already built in, which saves me a lot of time from having to unscrew, unglue and reseat all this stuff between this stuff. I don't know if these cameras are any different, but, uh, you know, in the newer, <clears throat> in the newer iPhone repairs, um, uh, I've seen people swap cameras and have them not work. Um, however, the other piece is that here we have some uh, type of insulating or isolating sticker, and here we do not. And the number one thing, there is a barcode on the original screen with the Apple logo right there, and there isn't a barcode there. That's about it. So we're going to migrate this Touch ID button to this um, assembly that came from my fix it. I'm gonna leave that. I don't feel like peeling this off and sticking it on perfectly. Now, the only thing is the adhesive that's involved in uh, gluing this on. There's also a metal bracket that's holding it in. Um, it doesn't come with uh, the iFixit kit, or maybe it does in form of this, but I don't think so. Uh, I think that's just a barcode. Uh, by the way, um, I mistakenly said that this is a screen protector because uh, when I was purchasing this, I thought there was a screen protector here. Um, no, this is the actual adhesive to put the screen back on. We have one, two, three, and four screws. Um, the three screws that are not a part of this black bracket, they are 1.3 millimeters, and this screw is 1.2 millimeters. 
and I don't even need a screwdriver just a bit to take these guys out first I'm gonna do all the 1.3 millimeter pieces It's the last one that doesn't want to get loosened without uh, additional torque. Those are the 1.3s, and this is the 1.2. So, plenty of opportunity to long screw the whole thing. Long screwing, in short, is adding a longer screw than necessary to the thing. And then we lift this metal cover off like so. Now, this needs to get disconnected from it's a double-sided ribbon connection, so there is a ribbon connector here, and there's two ribbon connectors here on one side and on the other, and then there's some glue right around here, right around here, holding this button in place. Oddly enough, the button comes out that way, not towards you, but away from you. Apparently, playing with this, for just a little bit just with my finger like so disconnected it I took the gloves off because this is the old part um, and now I imagine all of this this entire circuit is glued in so since this connector came apart it's important it's important to see that this connector is a part of the screen so I'm going to place a piece of tape here so it's not in the way of me extracting the touch ID sensor right there and this is the opposite side connector and this is where it's glued in and there's a little circular pin um, and it's all being held in place I'm gonna try to see if I could just lift it up without heat yeah this is going to be a problem so it needs to be heated up all right so i've heated this up off camera and i'm going to attempt to peel this guy up nicely that's it so it unglued and that's how it came out so it kind of goes through here, and then the cable assembly sits right there. This is the new screen, and the protective film is not letting me stick the button through it. So I'm just going to use the tweezer side to kind of cut through it a, a wee bit. Oh, well. Um, that's not going to work. So I'm going to have to just peel the new screen piece off a little bit and cut it off. What I've done is I've removed this uh, protective film from the new screen, attempting not to mar it or touch it. Even though it's my own phone, it'll mar it and touch it immediately. And then we're going to feed this guy through this hole like so and hopefully it'll just go inside and fit let's, let's just hope that happens 
Is it upside down? Oh yeah, it is. Okay, boom. Right there. That fit perfectly. And now, ah, it's not sticky enough to get glued. I'm not touching the glue. This fit perfectly. And just like on the other one, this piece, this piece needs to get lifted up over it and it needs to get inserted into and I don't know if you can see it but there is a there's a pin right here that registers the connector and then we could connect the connectors and hopefully between the leftover glue right here and this uh, loose connector we're good to go now we're good to go to reinstall the bracket that holds the thing and it holds it in three places so that's going to be the bracket right here and all right so i finally gotten one of the 1.2 millimeter almost Phillips three-way screws in. That's gonna prevent this from being bouncy. So I could get the rest of them in. That's another 1.2 millimeter. Yeah, these little tiny screws are a pain since the screwdriver that comes with the kit and the bits are not that magnetic. And they also have a tendency to fly away. Okay, I finally placed the 1.0 millimeter screw for the Touch ID button in the center, this little black piece. However, I can't apply too much pressure to it because it is the Touch ID button. So now we take a look at our screen and boom, boom, Touch ID button. It's in there. Great. So now, eight screws later, we could add some glue. Uh, we can have a put together iPhone. But before we do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this screen assembly to the phone and connect the battery and make sure that it actually works. Alrighty. So, moment of truth is going to be temporarily without the metal fittings to connect these connectors and without removing this uh, blue, I guess, protective thingy. Yeah, it doesn't want to go. It's a little bit crooked. pressure here here's the second one also popping right out and to, to guide it yeah it just wants to be about two degrees off the path and these are so tiny I prop the screen up on a piece of tape and hopefully now we can have less problems with the connectors if I screw the connector I need a new iPhone and God knows what else yeah it doesn't want to go it's like not at all I don't know what amount of force is needed to seat it in there, but on initial, it didn't want to go in there. All right. Last is this connector and then the battery connector. So we'll connect up the battery. And, and we'll 
will turn the phone on without Touch ID just to see if it powers on. I'm sure it's going to have some sort of a complaint about being turned on without <laughs> Touch ID, but we'll, we'll get there. And I don't know if it'll register Touch here. I'll still have to disconnect them because the glue gasket is, interestingly enough, left swipe. Okay, cool. No, okay, the phone is booting up because I kind of need the home button to input my pin code and things like that. Now, since this is my actual real phone that I use, I'm not going to do this on camera. But once I'm in the phone, I'll launch some sort of a display test app and see if my thumb opens the phone. Just to test the screen, I'm going to use a pencil thingy and start drawing everywhere. That's perfect. That's great. Everything's working. Select a different pencil highlighter, maybe. Okay, good. All of that is working, and this is through the, and we'll hit done. Perfect. Check keyboard. Okay. And now I've let it sit for a little bit so that the connectors bend into place. I'm gonna try to, where's that plastic tool that they suggest you use? Try to disconnect them. These are much stronger than the other connectors. Battery connector. ID connector. Need to be able to see what I'm doing too. Okay, touch ID connector is out too. All right. So now here's this piece of glue strip. I've when I was cleaning this, this messed me up because um, the phone has black ridges here. And this is actually black plastic. All the adhesive and human gunk is gone. And this is just extra adhesive that leaked over here. And the same way, every, this whole ridge is completely free from adhesive. But I, this adhesive strip should go this way exactly. Like so. But I believe top and the bottom parts. So here's the bottom part. So I'm going to sit this on the body of the phone instead of the screen and then reconnect everything, test, and then finally glue it down. I'm going to peel this back, trying not to touch it. This should make life easy, allegedly. And we'll insert it into the phone at exactly the points where it needs to get glued down. And if we miss a few, like I did just now, we have to peel it back up without applying any pressure. Yeah, this is probably the hardest part of this repair is reapplying the glue and this um, plastic template makes it a lot easier than those little rolls of glue that usually come with the stuff. Okay, this is mismatched.
Now, the reason why I'm not using gloves is because this glue sticks better to nitrile gloves than to just about anything else, apparently. Okay, this looks perfectly aligned. This looks aligned. This looks aligned. So now we can add some pressure in the corners in the little big pieces, like right here. There's a big piece of glue, and um, underneath, if you have the space gray foam, there's this black piece of plastic that looks like adhesive, but it isn't. So we'll apply that here. Squeeze that down like that. And we just wanna go through and make sure that the edge of this plastic is not sticking out anywhere outside of the base case of the phone. And this is also a time consuming process, just like it was to clean the phone up. This is time consuming in a different way. Well, you just have to make sure that the glue sticks harder to the phone the glue strips then they are sticking to the blue plastic that makes sure that you make a perfect gasket of glue out of them and that's the most important part because there's a nice little peel tab here that will allow you to peel it I mean if I if I could hate say something about the design Another forward-looking situation would have been to allow the display connectors to go through the plastic <clears throat> such that you could test the display, then peel this guy off some, I don't know, or cut it through and then uh, just close the phone. But here we're going to wait a little and then we're going to expose this side of the adhesive um, it's a little bit bouncy so you can see how it's a little bit physically bigger than the phone case all right i've waited a bit and i've peeled this piece of plastic right here but apparently the design is so cool that there's another layer of this uh, blue plastic that will allow me to literally do exactly what I wanted, which was to uh, test, uh, sit the connectors in the phone, test the phone without gluing it together, then peel up this guy, hopefully it'll come out without glue, and glue the phone together. This is excellent. So that's a thumbs up for iFixit or whomever builds these, these glue uh, brackets glue shims, glue gaskets for them. Really cool stuff. All right, so we, st we still have a perimeter protective glue gasket here. We're waiting for the, that glue to bind better to uh, our phone than to the gasket. And we also have this protective blue plastic here. And uh, I've reconnected all the connectors before screwing them down and we're gonna see if the phone turns on this is very handy I didn't expect that so the phone is booting up which is great and We haven't glued it together yet, nor nor have I screwed down any of the metal brack metal retention brackets for those ribbon cables. Let's see if it complains about anything. Nope. Cancel. Swipe left for camera. Swipe. Swipe left. Doesn't like me. What's my pin code? Swipe. Okay. Works great. As you can see, guys, on the video, it's about 
fifty Eastern time. Yeah, I took a little break, and you know, that's why uh, the re the repair on average, like if if you're uh, new at doing this, is going to take you about two hours or so, plus the dry drying time for the adhesive. So we're going to now open the phone, fold it open, and connect all the retention clips starting with here and then here. All right, so we lost a bit of daylight, so I had to compensate, but this piece is on, this piece is on. Uh, and so now I verified that the phone works. Moment of truth is we're gonna peel this piece of blue protective film off. we're going to try and without losing the adhesive which is kind of really handy not to lose peel off the other blue film stuff while the fresh adhesive stays on On the case of the phone. Wow, they pre cut it for me. I actually prepared scissors to cut it open, but apparently I don't need to do that since it's pre configured. Alrighty. And that's the other half. Gotta be careful around this corner. Make sure that. Okay. So now we're ready to close the phone. They said something about sliding it forwards or backwards. I don't remember entirely what, but I'm just going to apply pressure onto the phone continually like so. Okay, let's turn it off, power off, yeah, all right, so here there's a little gap, so we're going to push that in, push that in. Might need to use more force than this. I just don't know how. Okay. Alrighty. I'm gonna try to clamp it with something just to, to get it to look right on this side. I mean, it kind of looks right almost, but not quite. This is where the camera and all this other stuff is. Now all these edges, they're kind of just a little bit high by like a couple of micrometers. But there's only so much I could do. 
without causing major damage or disarray, so we'll just live with that. It's all glued in. I took the plastic off. My fingers were slipping. Right here. So as you can see, the true tone disappeared. Night shift is still available. Brightness available. Dark mode, light mode available, but no menu that's called True Tone is available here anymore. Oh well. Thanks for uh, repairing this phone with me, and uh, see you on the next one.